Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Mikael Sala. Uh, I work for Microsoft. And um, so this talk is about uh, script execution control, uh, a work I started working on a few years ago and, uh, with my previous employer, the French uh, Cyber Security Agency, and, uh, which is still going on. Initial scripts are really useful to do a lot of stuff and they're also useful to attackers. Um, they can be used for a lot of things and sometimes it might not be worth it to um, develop a complex exploit but just to execute, well, upload and execute the script. There's also a long history of uh, vulnerabilities, target, well, uh, issues, let's say, uh, for scripts, um, initial well, for instance, um, well, you cannot trust at all uh, the environment, the environment variables, and so on. So this might uh, be a risk uh, to execute uh, interested scripts. In initial, the issue is uh, summarized here. There's two ways to execute scripts, either to ask the kernel to execute a path, so it's the first way here, dot uh, slash script dot sh. And the other way is to ask the script interpreter to execute the script. So from the user point of view, it's the same. But from the kernel point of view, it is not the same. The, fir the first one goes through an exec VUC call. And the kernel can, well, execute the script. Uh, can kind of the same way it could execute an elf binary. And in the second way, the kernel only executes the interpreter, and then the interpreter opens the file, the script, and interprets the script. Um, so the main difference from the kernel point of view, and especially um, for all access control systems in the kernel, is that uh, the first way to execute the script is okay, because again, it sees everything and uh, knows the intent of the user. And, but the other way, second one, uh, the kernel doesn't know what is going on. It just knows that uh, the user wants to execute the sh uh, binary. And then this sh binary wants to open file in a read-only way. So what we like to do here is to let the kernel, and with the kernel to let uh, everything which is behind, so every access control types, including DAC, MAC, uh, integrity systems, and uh, everything that we can think of to be able to allow or deny such, such a script execution. Okay, um, the thread model is, um, well, first prerequisite. Um, well, if you want to have a secure system, well, you, have, you need to have uh, an access control system in place, enforced, and well configured. Um, but I explained, as I explained earlier, um, well, attackers can easily upload scripts, as they can do with any binaries and so on. Um, constraining binary execution is possible. Uh, constraining script execution is not always possible. But here, we want to address this part. Um, so from a um, global point of view, if you want to add on system, a secure system, uh, you may want to enforce uh, execution permissions. Execution permissions on the memory, on executable binaries, and also on scripts. So here, we want to address the third point. Um, we want to give the users, the sysadmin, the Linux distros, the ability to control script execution, not to deny everything, but to be able to, be able to enforce an access control system on that, the same way we can do on everything else. But for this to be, well, practical, to work in a real life, we need to be able to configure it, because, well, uh, kernel script interpreters the don't um, ask the kernel for such permission. So just open a file, a script, read it, interpret it, and kind of execute it in their own environment, their own process. 
Um, here we want to be able to give the tools to sysadmin to configure uh, in an incremental way the system uh, to be able to uh, control script execution. Uh, because uh, to give you some example, um, if you're using a Linux distro, there's a lot of uh, stuff going on, a lot of scripts, and probably multiple uh, script interpreters like Python, Shell, uh, Dash, Bash, uh, and so on. And well, with one update, you might not have all these script interpreters patched at the same time. So you need to be able to roll these updates and configure your system uh, bit after bit. Another thing to keep in mind is that not all scripts are equals. There's multiple kinds of scripts. Um, scripts is mainly something which is executable from the user point of view, but not from the kernel point of view. So this might include, uh, well, for instance, uh, Python scripts, which are really powerful. They can do whatever they want. There's a lot of libraries. There's also shell scripts, which might be a bit more restricted um, because it's not designed to do same things. Uh, for instance, they cannot directly call syscalls, which might not be um, a good thing from the attacker point of view. So uh, Python is a good attacker tool, for instance. And we can also think about other kind of scripts like JavaScript and WebAssembly, whatever you can find in your web browsers. But these are, most of the time, uh, really already well sandboxed. So different policies and different risks. The first proposal, which was sent some years ago, uh, is called OmeXec. So the design for this patch series was to enhance the open syscall. Um, first, to give you a bit of background, uh, this was used uh, in a really uh, custom and tailored security distro called ClipOS. And the main policy of this distro was to enforce a right XOR execute policy. So either on the kernel side, uh, on the memory side, on the executable side, on the Linux, uh, well, the mount points, partitions, and also the scripts execution. So the idea was to add a new way to open a file. So you can add, uh, you know, for instance, it's uh, or append, or read-only, or write, and so on. So options uh, to pass through the open syscall to open a file in different ways. Um, with this new OmeXec flag, um, the idea was to tell the kernel, well, um, I'm a script interpreter, and I want to open this script to execute it. So the kernel will then go through, uh, well, kind of a common access check uh, on this file, but it will also um, take care to check that this file was in um, no exec or executable uh, mount point. So this is interesting because it is really, well, it is not too difficult to configure a system with uh, correct no exec mount options. So it's easy to, to have, for instance, a slash user with an executable mount point, but the slash home and slash var as um, no exec mount point. And this way, it was kind of first way to configure this uh, security policy. Internally, uh, using the OME exec flag, we'll set the, the F mod exec flag, which is an, a kind of internal flag, which is propagate, propagated to other security system in, in the kernel. And there was, so I implemented so a way to uh, configure this from a System in point of view, thanks to a CCTL. So uh, two flags for the CCTL. The first one to enforce the no exec uh, um, well enforcement, or to handle the file permission check. So uh, without any configuration, by default it will not change anything. So it was a flag that would not do anything if it wasn't configured. 
which is in fact what we want to have. Because if you well, push this kind of update to a generic you know, this row, um, well, it could break, and that's not a good thing. So by default, you should not do anything. But the idea was to let the sysadmin to configure that and kind of uh, harden their own uh, installation. So uh, at first, for instance, uh, to handle the mounts, no exact option, and at the second time, to make sure that all the scripts have the executable permission, which might not be the case. Um, so this uh, configuration went from uh, using YAMA and then creating a new exec LSM, and then finally put the, uh, putting it in the core kernel. Uh, the idea is, well, this should be kind of in mainline, enabled, well, possibly enabled by default uh, for everyone uh, in the long term, so it should not be part of an LSM. Um, pros and cons. Um, well, this new flag, the good thing is it's configurable, easily configurable. It can handle, uh, well, um, notification with um, the FAN open exec flag, for instance. So you can use um, FAN notify to get notification of something which is, or a script which is uh, being requested to be executed. Uh, there's no resignation by design because you open a file and at the same time the check is performed. And uh, well, some things that might be a bit weird at first, that this flag um, could match either a file but also directories. And that was kind of a easy or lazy way at first to handle uh, specific interpreters to make sure that uh, whole directory could be executable. So uh, in this case, it was used, um, well, to patch uh, IST, so a Java video machine. Um, the cons. Well, one, one of the advantages and cons is that uh, open uh, modes, uh, well, this kind of flag, uh, adding a new one, it's not a mode, it's, a, it's an option actually, um, but um, easing node. Uh, so if you use new open option on a whole kernel or a new kernel, it would accept that, except that in new kernel it could, in this case, uh, have a different behavior. So that was kind of a good thing and bad thing. The good thing is, well, you don't want to uh, change um, what already works, but the bad thing is, uh, well, you don't know if it will be enforced or not. So that was uh, considered not a good thing. Um, and there was no way to check all your pen files. So that might be an issue too. Second proposal was um, instead of uh, focus on the open syscall, focus on the access uh, family of syscalls. So uh, we added a new AT interpreted flag this time. Uh, the same way there is an uh, ATE access flag, which is uh, a way to kind of tweak the access check, which is performed with the uh, access syscall, access at syscall, or F access at two syscall. Um, so the AT interpreted uh, flag uh, was kind of transformed to an XOK mode, which is to check if a file can be executed. Um, so this was kind of a hack. So not really good, but still good ideas. Um, well, we were using an existing syscall, which is in general good. But uh, yeah, too much issues. And also maybe a bit too much focus on LSM uh, issues, well, it's the LSM problems. Uh, the third proposal was to implement a new syscall. Uh, it was kind of made more generic to be able to handle more than only script execution. So the name was chosen after a different back shading um, to name it Trusted4. The idea was to, for use space, to be able to ask the kernel, uh, can I trust this file descriptor for this use case? Kind of generic, maybe too much. Um, and the first 
use case was, can I trust this file descriptor, uh, the content of this file descriptor to be uh, ex executed? Um, yeah, so you took file descriptors, good things. Um, and at first, we were able to ask if file descriptors should be executed or not, according to the kind of global security policy. So new standard is called, quite simple, flexible, but it's a, a bit too flexible and not enough, um, uh, with not enough specification. Um, could only handle file descriptors. So that might be an issue for some use cases. We'll see that later. Um, yeah, um, sem semantic might be not clear enough. It is kind of a yeah, different point of view. Um, and it was thought that the access kind of families was, in fact, maybe the best solution. So here I come with a new proposal. It is not cemented yet. Um, I started working on it, but there's still some issues. And most importantly, I would like to get some feedback from this audience. Uh, so any KL minus, SM minus, Linux users, sysadmins, and so on. So the idea is to add two things. First one, XAV OK, which is a new mode. So when you uh, call the uh, f-access at to syscall, for instance, or only the access syscall, um, you either pass f-ok to ask if the file if a file exists, r-ok to ask if the file is readable, uh, w-ok if it is writable, or x-ok if it is uh, executable. Here, uh, the idea is to add a new mode, which is xav ok so quite close to the x -OK mode, but that's not really the same. It's kind of a superset of the x -OK, uh, mode. The main differences are um, it set, so it is the same as x -OK, but it also adds, um, well, set in the kernel the f mode exec, which can be then uh, forwarded to other access control systems, such as LSMs. And it can also be used by the notification system uh, to know that something is about to be executed. And the idea is to also, uh, well, improve that by passing three new, well, three existing flags uh, to LSMs, which are already passed when you're executing uh, a binary, so um, with the execvc call, the, well, different LSM gets these flags and can then take uh, enlightened actions according to uh, safety or not of this potential execution. So as you can see, uh, the idea with execv OK is not to only check access control system, to, to, to not only check the access control, uh, the permission uh, from the current process uh, to do an execution of a specific file, but to do that also with uh, the context of the current process and to kind of uh, forward more metadata to the kernel. Um, and yeah, uh, in the case of script execution, uh, well, most of the time you write to, to use also the ARK uh, mode uh, because, well, you want to read the content of script to be able to execute it. What about LSMs? Um, well, this is different kind of LSM, uh, mainly for access control or for integrity, which is kind of an access control, but not really. Um, so the idea is for them to be able to get uh, the same, or almost the same information as um, when something is about to be executed for a wheel. So uh, they will get the F mode exec, and also as we, I just talked about the LSM and safe flags. And they could also be able to differentiate between an execv uh, native call and such an access call with the may access flag, which is an internal kind of flag, uh, pass through all the access uh, layers of the kernel. But there's still some compatibility challenges. 
Um, well, when you, you change the space, you need to, to go bit by bit. Um, well, you need to modify script interpreters. Uh, it's kind of already done, well, in some ways uh, for Python, but only for Windows. But the framework is kind of ready. And other interpreters, are, other script languages are, um, would like to uh, be part of this too. Um, once you have one or two script interpreters updated and ready to uh, transfer this information to as a candidate for execution, you also need to have, well, you need Linux distro to uh, well, take these script interpreters and also make them compatible with the scripts provided by the distro. And you also need to have the sysadmin uh, to be sure that an update and installation of the system will perform well with the specific scripts uh, that he could put on uh, the system or that a developer or a user can use uh, for their own uh, use cases. So uh, we cannot do just, um, we can, cannot just add a, a switch uh, with uh, on and off. But the idea here is to make it a bit more flexible than the previous proposals and to still rely on a, a CCTL, but to make the CCTL um, per month namespace. Uh, the idea is, well, when you do, when you do moon points, uh, you do them uh, kind of per month namespace. So I think it makes sense to be able to configure um, a namespace to add more restrictions. Um, for instance, you, you would like to say, you could say, um, well, for this container, uh, you want to run either no script, well, no, no untrusted script. So no script coming from uh, a TMP directory, a working directory, and so on, but only from read-only um, uh, sections. Um, uh, provided by the container itself, the container image. So that could work, but at the same time, you would like to work on your script as a developer. So, well, on your main namespace or your work namespace, uh, you will not have this kind of restrictions because, well, you would like uh, on your home directory to have script and use them. So the idea is, uh, as a first proposal, uh, to have to be able to reinforce or not either the mount no exec option or and uh, the file permissions. So uh, do we need to have this script to have the, the execution permission? Um, but the difference with this approach, uh, with the previous approaches and this one, is that it is kind of split it in two. Um, for this compatibility to be uh, taken in, in, um, in account, um, the idea is to add a new accessfs2 flags, not a mode, but a flag. Uh, the same way we can have the at at access flags that change the semantic of checking execution, read, or write permissions. Um, so with this flag, it will be possible to rely on the kernel CCTL configuration per namespace instead of, um, well, enforcing everything at once. So same configuration here, but uh, yeah. So the idea is for generic script interpreters to use this flag because they will not, well, de such developers cannot know where the script interpreters will be used. But if you're uh, developing a Linux, a tailor Linux distro for an appliance and so, or something like that, well, this kind of flag would not be required because you'll be able to control everything. Um, quick list of pros and cons. Um, with this approach, with a F, well, the access um, syscall approach, you can either handle file descriptors or path. Uh, path might be a good or bad things. Um, well, one use case that was uh, uh, explained is that you might think about your uh, shell uh, to be able to check the content of the pass variable 
to know if uh, this phi or another phi can be executed. So, uh, for instance, if you have a, a script in your path environment, uh, well, your shell might check uh, with a name, not a file descriptor, if your script could be part of the compilation, for instance. But most of the case, you want to use file descriptors because uh, it, sh it is much more safer and, uh, well, it avoids race conditions, mainly time of check and time of use uh, race conditions. Uh, this approach, I think, is um, well defined. I think uh, the most we can do. Um, we can still rely on pair mount uh, configuration with mount the mount no exec option. Uh, there is no implicit use of other mode. It is a new dedicated mode, which is kind of a superset of the XOK mode. And this kind of check can be um, used by LSM to enforce the same restriction as they do for any execution, but also to log uh, such items. Like then, for instance, um, if you're trying to execute something, um, but we, you don't want to execute ready, um, the LSM, like AC Linux does, could uh, log such a temp in, uh, with a specific flag indicating thing that it is not a real execution, but it is an attempt to execute something. So, uh, and according to the caller, it, it could know, well, it is a script interpreter, so it might be legitimate or not, and log such, uh, such a temp. Um, so, some human indications, uh, well, uh, there's questions just after that, but um, one issue might be, but it is kind of the same for every new interface, is that, well, you can might not support exec v okay, of course. Um, but it is really easy to check for that. If you set the mode and the Cisco return e and val, well, it is not supported, so uh, your script interpreters can just ignore that. And with the access kind of, uh, access family Cisco, uh, well, you can use pass too which might be a bit risky, but it's still possible. So, some open questions. Uh, first, the name, execv okay, is it okay? Is it okay to have such a name? Um, I don't like it very much, but I didn't find something better to express such semantic. So, any suggestion? If you have, feel free to share it. Um, other questions might be about uh, set to ID binaries. So, what should happen if either the script has the set to ID uh, permission, which is not a good thing, which should not be a good thing, and should be nogged anyway? And what should happen if the script interpreter is running as set to ID, which is also not a good idea, but might happen. Um, and we also need to check and be sure that using such f mod exec will not trigger unexpected um, kernel behavior. Because it, it is kind of a new way for your space to set this flag, which wasn't directly available before, only with the uh, um, uh, regular exec VC call. And yeah, finally, well, we cannot do the exact same checks and enforce the, well, to have the exact same guarantees than when you're executing something for real. Uh, because when you're executing something for real, the current process uh, can be locked. And this will just last for a few, a few milliseconds, I guess. Uh, but when the script interpreters uh, do such check or want to do such check on a file descriptor, um, you cannot lock anything really. So that's a limitation. Uh, I'll go back to this slide if there's uh, some ideas. Um, some lesson learned, nothing really new here. 
But still, um, well, we should encourage everyone to use valid descriptors, but there are some legitimate use cases to not use them. Um, Defining a clear goal is really important, especially uh, when you're defining a new interface and a kind of interface. Uh, so it might be good to have to be flexible enough, but not to be unspecified enough. And um, yeah, if you want to extend something, that's good, but there is a balance to, to find between extending or adding a new uh, interface, adding a new syscall, for instance. Um, well, to wrap up, be able to control script execution is really important. It is not done, really, nowadays, but it should. Um, and one thing to keep in mind is that we don't want to just block script execution. We want to be able to control stuff, like we do with other stuff. And, yeah. We'll need some script interpreters changes, but light ones, so that should not be too much of an issue. But one thing to keep in mind is that if you want to have um, a robust script interpreter, um, for instance, a restricted uh, bash, um, well, there's a lot of things to keep in mind, especially to not load any um, modules, Python modules, for instance, to uh, most of the time, ignore the path variable, to ignore the LD preload variable, and so on. So you might find some uh, similarities with um, set to ID binaries protections. Next step, well, it's to submit this uh, 19th version for this proposal and get reviews. And well, for future works, um, there's some ideas to extend uh, this execution restrictions to the kernel, but that will be another talk for tomorrow. Thank you. Um, you talked a little bit about uh, Python. Are you thinking that the Python interpreter would set this bit on like all imported modules, or you're thinking no Python modules? Or? Yeah, so there's um, already an uh, implementation in uh, the Python interpreter, which was designed for Windows, because there's the same, definitely the same use case for Windows, and uh, well, Windows has is a nice target for attackers, because it's uh, for end users. Um, there's also kind of the same implementation for PowerShell, for the same, same idea, same uh, use case behind. Um, for this kind of script interpreters, um, either you want your user to execute whatever he wants because he's a developer, a sysadmin that knows what he's doing, I hope so. And um, in the case of regular users, which are not developers, nor sysadmin, and nor should, should execute a script, uh, yes, uh, you should restrict um, the input that the script interpreter takes, uh, the module that the script interpreter can load with, uh, uh, with uh, arguments, dash m and so on, and you should restrict a lot of things. And yeah, that's implemented in Python. Um, it was a while since I took a look, but yes. Okay, and since you asked for feedback, I think it's ugly to set a new flag via access at. Yeah. Well, yeah, just to add something, uh, if you want to enforce that, of course, uh, you should, it should be a, a built configuration. So you might have two script interpreters, one which, which is restricted for like every users, and another one which is only accessible to uh, developers, uh, sys and means, and so on. But that can be enforced with a regular access control system. Okay, uh, so another question. I think there are some other um, applications for this other than just executable files. So I think on a system you have um, configuration files which can be really critical and in a way you could say a uh, configuration file is almost kind of like an executable. It will change the execution behavior of a file. So if you have a web server starting up, for example, um, and I thought initially I thought that this would be generalized enough that you could use it for non-executable things, but I'm just wondering if that 
um, needs to be taken into consideration if it's going to be too exec uh, execution focused. And I think there's a possible uh, another application which is reading like private keys and, and utilizing them. Again, you, you have these, uh, the behavior can change dramatically based on input. Um, so I just wonder if this is going to be generic enough um, or whether that needs to be considered in the, the naming and the design. Yeah, good question. So um, that was part of, of the idea to create a new syscall, uh, trusted for syscall, which was kind of flexible, but maybe a bit too flexible. Um, so yeah, taking into account configuration, configuration is, uh, might be as critical as um, uh, scripts. Um, but so one thing to keep in mind is that if your script interpreters uh, can take arbitrary configuration, well, it's kind of not your script interpreter anymore. So uh, you should only take configuration from trusted sources. And that can, uh, most of the time, be um, kind of hard coded and so works. Uh, but in some other cases, it might not be the case. Um, I think it should be possible to extend the F access at syscall with other modes, but that will need to be really well defined. And the issue might be, well, uh, the kernel, it is not already part of the kernel semantic. The kernels really don't know and um, don't care about if you're reading a cohesion file, if you're reading a sensitive file, if you're reading uh, a picture or whatever. You just care that you're reading something. And the access control system, the current one, or the main ones, only care about reading stuff, uh, not tying, not uh, extending the, this read permission, uh, splitting this read permission into uh, more granularity with more semantic. Um, so I think it will not be part, well, it will definitely not be part of this patch series. Um, and it might be uh, was creating a new dedicated interface, uh, but that Although, will be changing. Yeah, I think though when you have a script interpreter, again the kernel, you're, from the kernel's point of view, all that's happening is you have a, a process is opening a file and reading it. It doesn't know that yeah. the script interpreter is um, executing it. Um, so I, I think that there maybe is maybe too much semantics already in the kernel around this being for execution. Um, so I would, I'm sort of pushing <laughs> back towards the trust. It's more like trusted. Um, let's not get into like executable JPEG files. And things yeah. <laughs> so the idea is, well, the main, yeah, I think the main um, pushback from, from Linus was uh, the semantic needs to be really well defined. And for this to be really well defined, needs to be already uh, defined in the kernel. So uh, the idea with, with a new proposal is to add an interface to expose to user space the kernel semantic which is already implemented. Yes. Um, get my notes. Um, yeah, I think uh, the main problem is that we already have the access control for read and write and everything, but the the execution, like the access control for execute, is hidden in the kernel and has multiple weird side effects that were not, uh, you, you couldn't query it in any way. Whereas everything else, you do a read access check and you'll pass through all the LSMs. Like you'll get a real result, um, but that wasn't true for this. Um, I Personally, I'd like to really push back on Linus's suggestion that maybe we should include paths in this because why create a modern interface to something that has that exposes a time of check, time of use flaw. Like, don't. <laughs> yeah. If you're modifying your script interpreter already to do the right thing to check for this, just open the file descriptor first and use it as a file descriptor and just don't expose something that could get misused. There's no reason to do that. We already have to change user space to use the API, so it should use modern APIs to do these things as opposed to all the race conditions, and that's, I mean, we're still getting hit with these kinds of, and now we swap out the sim link right between yeah. the checks. So I'd really push back on the on the file, the, the path name part of that. Um, 
for uh, the set UID thing, which is one of the things Linus had said, hey, I don't really care which way this goes, I just want it discussed. Um, he was talking about, well, you could end up doing sort of emulation of execution in user space if you could expose all this stuff. And I don't know if we want like, you know, exec v okay and exec v no suid okay, where you're actually saying, yes, I would like to examine the suid behavior here, or no, I don't care about it, or defining that we'll never go do suid type things and just declare that interpreters don't have a suid mode anymore. Just we'll pretend Perl never had set UID Perl and, and move forward. Um, yeah, about this uh, set UID stuff. So it, it's mostly about the no, S, no set, no SUID mount option. Um, so I think, I think the most safe and wild and simple approach would be to just do the same check as a kind of dose when you're executing something. Just, just that and just mix the semantic because it is what we want, but not let the user ask for a specific use case the same way they, the user doesn't, don't ask for um, either this pattern is, it, is in a no exec mount point or not. Just ask, can I, well, if I do an exec view with that, uh, will it work or not? Right, I think the issue is that we might end up in a situation where it's not just will it work or not, but will it work and be SUID or not. Um, right now, if you have, you know, you try to ride, run or actually run a program that's set UID marked, like the set UID bit is set, but you're in a no suid mount, it just runs without the bit. Um, so if you've got, you know, suid Perl trying to do a check, you'll come back with, yeah, you can execute it. It shouldn't be suid though. And then it'll look at the file system and say, oh, I have the bit, so I should do the bit. So I think there needs to be some sort of specific description of if the bits are set and it would be allowed to do this if we do this like actually yeah. lay it out what the logic should be for that but personally i think it should be no suid at all ever <laughs> yeah so the question might be um if a script interpreters is run as set uh would that be simpler to just check that this process is running as set ID and then just exit that could work too Uh, hi. Um, apologies if you perhaps mentioned this during Trusted 4. If you did, I, I suppose I missed it. Um, have you given any consideration to uh, script interpreters that can take their script via standard in? Because, I mean, you could stop somebody with a new flag from running sh script.sh all you want. That person could then just run cat script.sh pipe to sh. Yeah, good question. So that was part, and uh, well, still part of uh, the patch series, uh, to, well, yeah, the first version really check. Um, so, yeah, so, yeah, to summarize, um, uh, we could call Python uh, with uh, slash dev slash uh, um, uh, TTY, for instance. And then you could pass stuff inside that. Um, but the question is, is this device executable? Is this file executable? Is this pipe executable? Um, and I think it could be solved quite simply with that. Question here? Um, so I would caution you against making this a property of the mount namespace um, out of concerns about the implications of that in terms of its being able to escape from that by creating your own user namespace and mount namespaces. Yeah, um, so in the code I'm currently writing, uh, the idea is to, when 
a new namespace is created. Uh, it inuits the previous limitations, restrictions, and can only add new ones. But yeah, that might not be good for everyone, but I think it's much better than a global system policy that would limit a lot such adoption. So if there's any other idea, I will be interesting to hear. All right, thank you.